Makarayande. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, Cross Point. You know, it is good to be in the house of God. From the time I accepted Christ, God gave me a strong desire for his house. There's no other place that I I desire to be than in his house. Amen? Amen? And this morning I pray that that spirit will come upon you. You understand? This is a spirit. That spirit will capture you. That you have no other joy but in his presence. The Bible says in his presence there's fullness of fullness of ah, receive that joy. That unspeakable joy. That joy that, that may, it doesn't make sense. Because even when you're passing through trouble, even when you're passing through tough time, that joy is still there. The joy of God, that doesn't make sense. How can you be laughing when you're going through what you're going through? It is called the joy of the Lord. It is your portion. In the name of Jesus. This morning, I want to share a word with you. If you were not here last week, I just want to go over some of the stuff that uh, Pastor Nadia shared. First, I want to take this opportunity to uh, say a big God bless you to Apostle, wherever he is. May you uh, raise, raise your hands and just say, God bless you, Apostle. Yeah. He's doing a fantastic job. Yeah. Listen, his calling is not just Calgary. His calling is beyond Calgary. Yeah. For, for us that are here, it is our responsibility to come together and to push forward. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So God is using him elsewhere, but he's also here. Yeah. Apostle, God bless you for the great vision and for the a wonderful uh, a work that God is using you to do. Amen? Amen. My name is Kofi. You can call me Pastor Kofi, you can call me Kofi, whatever name that you, as long as it's my name. <laughs> Amen? Amen? I'm one of the sons here, Amen. and I think I am so happy to be part of this church. Amen. You don't understand, I've been in Calgary for 10 years, and I didn't know about Cross Point. But the moment I discover Cross Point, the whole city of Calgary, Cross Point has become the talk of the town. Amen? There are people who come in here that because they heard about the church. Amen? Amen? They heard about what God is doing here. So I want you to be proud of yourself. There's something good that is happening here. Last week, Pastor Nadia shared a word, seeking the face of God. And it was powerful. I just want to Take just a few points from what she spoke of last week because it's tied into what I, the Lord has laid on my heart this morning. She said, Moses knew the ways of God, but the children of Israel knew the acts of God. Moses knew the ways of God, but the children of Israel knew the acts. And she was encouraging us to know his ways. Don't know, don't just get familiar with what God can do. What God can provide for you. But know God for who he is. Are you here? And that's why you, you, you don't care what comes in your way. Because you know the God in whom you have believed. She continued and said that there is a call from God for intimacy. Call from Jehovah to the church. Because we are at the end time. Listen, everything that is happening is an indication that the end has come. The end time is here and we ought to be prepared to meet our God. Amen. She also said that all we need is the revelation of Christ and he will reveal himself to us. Amen. This morning I want to... Entitled my message, 
We are called to have an intimacy with Jehovah God. You are created for intimacy. Do you believe that? You are created to have an intimacy. That is the reason of your existence. And this morning, I want to prove that to you. When you pick up two pieces of paper and you put glue in between and stick them together and give it a time to dry out, when you try to separate those two pieces of paper, it is almost impossible. That's how God has created it. You are not created to be on your own. You are not created to do things on your own. You are created to be intimate with God. It's like a fish outside of the water. Eventually that fish, as often or as much as they stay outside of the water, they will die. Listen, this morning God wants me to tell you that you cannot make it on your own. Life is difficult of its own. God created you to be intimate with him. God created you to de be dependent on him, not on your own. I know that, you know, you got everything all wrapped up. You got everything in control. It's good. But God created you for the purpose to be intimate with him. Sometimes we, we, we think we can figure everything out. So God stands back and watch you. It's not that there's no God. You know why? A lot of people, oh, if there is God. If you hand over to God, you will see the manifestation of God. When you think you can figure it out, God will watch you. And God will do this. And he will watch you. But when you say, Lord, I can't do this thing anymore. Lord, this thing is too much. I, don't, I can't figure my way out. Then the mighty God, he will begin to manifest himself. Amen. God will drop some ideas into your spirit. Hallelujah. What is the meaning of intimacy with God? Intimacy is closeness. Intimacy is togetherness. Intimacy is attachment, being attached. You know, the marriage, the physical marriage between a man and a woman is a perfect picture of intimacy. How the wife and the husband, they are close. I know that in your house, when you sleep, there's a, a big lane in between. <laughs> I told my wife I'll buy a single bed. <laughs> you can't move any farther away. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But the closeness between a husband and a wife is a uh, a picture of our intimacy with God. How familiar we are to God. How friendly we are. You know, sometimes it baffles my mind that a husband can be so friendly to everybody except his wife. It doesn't make sense. If you know how to be friendly, don't you think it makes sense to be friendly with the one you live with? Some people don't agree. <laughs> you sm they, they, they will smile and talk and talk with everybody. Yet when they see the wife scream their face like this. When they see the husband, no. If you can be friendly, be friendly to your husband. If you be, can be friendly, be friendly to your wife. And so the Bible is saying here, we are intimate with God. Created for that purpose. We have an affection. Intimacy is an affection. God knows your thoughts. Even when you haven't spoken, he can already tell what you are feeling. You know, a good husband, when he walks into his house and he looks in, in the face of his wife, he can tell what is already happening. You look at your wife, you say, oh my God. <laughs> you know when to say some things. Do, do you understand? Because you know her. You know her. God knows you. 
So stop trying to pretend and, and trying to play around God. He knows you. Can you say that to somebody? God knows you. No pretending. Be real with him. Listen, if you're struggling with something, you know, Lord, this one, I, I, I mess up. I need help. And when you do that, God will come in. And because he sees the sincerity of your heart. And God will begin to manifest and come in. The power of God will come you, come upon you and break whatever that is harassing you. But as long as you continue to pretend, as you have it all together, God will watch you. This morning, God doesn't want to watch you. He wants to come into your situation. Be real with him. Amen? It is called intimacy. When you are intimate with somebody, you're real with him. You don't pretend. Right? You have an affection. Intimacy is confidence. You have confidence in God. It doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter the storm that are, you know, raging in your life. You are confident in God. You are, you are, your confidence is in God. Those things are tough. Those things are hard. You cannot even figure, figure things out. But you have confidence in God. All the things that are surrounding you. We have 21 days before the year 2017 ends. Look, sit down and begin to prayerfully think. From the beginning of the year till now. Some of the things you have passed through. And yet you are still alive. And yet you are still put together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If it had not been God who's on your side, you would have lost your mind. You would have been broken in pieces. If it had not been God on your side, you would have messed up. Somebody say, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. But you are all put together. Or put your hands together for God. There can only be an intimacy with God when we are in good fellowship with him. How can you have an intimacy with somebody when you don't talk to him? How can you have an intimacy with somebody when, when you're not real with them? Intimacy begins when there is a fellowship. Not when you come to church. When's the last time you pray? Oh, don't tell me. When's the last time you read, you read your Bible? Intimacy. So, listen, if I close my eyes, you can bring maybe 10 women here. And I will close my eyes. All the women will speak, but I will know the voice of my wife. Are you here? Why? Because you know her. The Bible says, my sheep... Yes, my voice. They know my voice. And they hearken to it. How can you hear and know the voice of God when you don't know his word? How can you hear and know the voice of God when all you listen to is all this garbage on TV? How can you hear the voice of God? The offering message that came, it said that there's many voices. It's so true. There are so many voices around us. There are so many voices that we are hearing. There are so many voices that are so strong. And the voice of God has become so silent that you cannot hear anything. But how can you hear what God is saying to you personally when you have no fellowship? God is not mute. God can speak. And the Bible, Job said, he speaks. And speaks very clear. God is not an author of confusion. When God speaks into your life, it's clear. But the problem what we are facing is that there are too many voices. There are too many voices. This morning, I silent every voice in your life. And that the voice of God will be clear in your life. 
that there will be no question. There will be no doubt that this is God. Amen. Amen. Every person has a love language. I learned this. That every, you know, every human being has what they love, what they are attracted to. And if you have a wife and you don't know her love language, you will mess up. And the reason why I'm saying that because God has his love language. And I'll tell you what it is. But the person that you're moving with, I'll use my wife as an example. <laughs> you know, her love language is when you buy things. <laughs> and for me, when you take me to shopping, I want to go and come out fast. I don't like this shopping stuff. Because I want to know I'm going shopping, I'm getting A and B. So I get there, I grab it, I'm gone. <laughs> what am I saying? I'm saying every human being has his love language. What they are att attracted to, what they like. So is every man. Yeah. There are some men, it's just the, you make them feel like they are the kin. How you service them. How you treat them. And they will do anything for you. That's their love language. If you don't get to know that, you begin to do things thinking that you are pleasing the person, but yet they are not attracted. They are not pleased with it. And in John chapter 14, verse 15, the Bible says, If you love me, you will keep my commandment. God has a love language. It is called obedience. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. It doesn't matter. You can do it in tears. You can do crying. When it is not obedience to his word, God doesn't hear. God has a love language. It's called obedience. When you learn to obey his word, you will fall in love with God. When you love, when you love to obey God, you know, sometimes if you're a pastor, you, you have a chance to, you know, visit people, talk to people. And there are times, you, you know, you talk to uh, married people and maybe there's a little bit of issue. Even when you're using the word of God to, you know, counsel them. No, 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 this pastor, this one, no, no, no. When the word of God is not enough for you, I don't know what we can use to speak to you. Listen, the word of God, the Bible said the word of God is powerful. I fear your word, and because your word says so, I honor your word. I might not like it, but I obey. And that's what Peter said. He said, listen, now we have toiled all night. I know. We have gone over all night trying to look for fish. There's no fish. But you know what? At your word, I will obey. This morning, may you learn, learn to, to obey God. I don't know what God is saying to you in your household, over your life, but learn to obey. Sometimes it's not too pretty. But at the end of it, you will see that it is beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. So God has a love language. And his love language is obedience. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, sometimes God knows us so much. I remember one time, I went back home for the first time. And as I was walking down the street, I mean, my back is facing the individual. The person shouted out a name I'm not going to mention here. <laughs> I just froze. I said to my brother, whoever is calling me, he knows me. Do you hear me? You, and you might have a name. <laughs> you have a name, and when you hear that name, you know question. 
you will not question it. Why? Because that person knows you very well. It is God. God knows you, even your nicknames and your secret names. And sometimes those names, you hear them, you know, oh my goodness, whoever this person is, he really knows me. Are you here? God knows you. God knows you. He knows your every thought. And he knows you to a point, the Bible says he knows the number of hair on your head. This is a powerful God. This is a mighty God. So this morning, you have come before this God that he desired to have an intimacy. God is not interested in the things you can give to him. God is not interested in your, in your money. You think God wants your money? Now the church, money has become a problem. When you cannot give your money to, 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 to the support of the church, but yet you want the church to be there for you. God knows you. And he knows you in the intimate way. Do you know him in an intimate way? Hallelujah. How can I be intimate with someone I cannot see? This morning, that may be your question. How can I be intimate with God? God and I cannot go out. We cannot high five each other. We can't go out for coffee. We can't go out and sit and chat. How can I be intimate, intimate with him? Listen, this morning I'm not here to mislead you and give you that there is some kind of formula that when you do this and this and that, you, there's an intimacy. Christianity itself have too many formulas. There's enough formulas out there. All I'm saying this morning, the word that the Lord wants me to give to you is that God is interested in intimate relationship. Hallelujah. We cannot speak of intimacy with Jehovah without understanding what in eternal life is. And that's what Apostle has been teaching and speaking of for the past few weeks. Eternal life. We cannot un have full understanding of intimacy if we do not understand what eternal life means. Someone might say, eternal life, what does it mean? Someone may say that it means living forever. Eternal life, does it mean living forever? No. Because when we go to heaven, those who are in hell will also live forever. Do you know that? So then eternal life cannot be, be living forever. Because nobody will cease to exist. God created us. Whether you end up in heaven or hell, you will live forever. So eternal life is not living forever. And so what does it mean? Well then, can it be that eternal life is living in heaven forever? <laughs> Amen? Amen? No, it doesn't mean living in heaven also forever. That's not what eternal life is. In order to have intimacy with God, we must understand this question. We have to understand that the word everlasting life or eternal life is a present tense possession. It's a present tense possession. I know in our tradition... The understanding is that eternal life is living after death. Once you die, you, you go on to live. That is our tradition, the definition that it gives to us. But I want us to read John chapter 3, verse 36. John 3, 36. He that believe on the Son has He that believe in the Son has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. Amen. 
It's not something that begins when we get to heaven. Eternal life is not something that begins when you get to heaven. Eternal life begins once you receive the Son. So the moment you lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus, you know, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I believe what you did on the cross for me. The Bible says, I'll write at that moment, you have eternal life. Amen. Your eternal life is now. Amen? Amen? So the question still remains, what is eternal life? This is a very important. Let us also read John 3.16. John 3.16. I know everyone should know this scripture. <laughs> What does it say in John 3.16? Let's all read it together. Amen. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believe in him shall not perish. You know, the church, this is where our biggest mistake is at. Should not perish, period. They put a period there. Stop. Many people have mistakenly thought that the goal of salvation is the forgiveness of sin. To avoid hell. That's what many people have in their mind. That the goal of salvation is forgiveness of sin. Remember, it is, a, it is part of it, but the goal of salvation is not forgiveness of sin. Am I confusing somebody? <laughs> Not perishing in hell is an important part of what Jesus came to do. He accomplished that by paying the debt for all our sins. He accomplished that by paying for all our debts on the cross. Your present, your past, even your future. The death on the cross has covered all that. All your sins have been covered. So it is not what you would do now that Jesus will have to die again. The death on the cross has already paved away all and cleared away all your sins. Amen? Amen. Salvation is much, much more than our sins forgiven. Amen? If we... If we just ask Jesus to come in our heart, and that is all to forgive us of all our sins, then we have missed the whole point. If, if your goal and the prayer you pray was that, Lord, forgive me for all my sins. Forgive me all, for all my sins. If that is all you pray for and that's your goal, then you missed the point. Amen? Since... Sin, let me, describe, let me put it this way. Sin was a barrier between God and man. Yeah. You see, what happened is that after the fall of Adam, there was a separation. Right? And that separation is what caused Jesus to come and die so that the bridge that was broken can be re-amended. So Jesus, his target was not the sin, but rather the relationship. But it happens that he has to deal with sin before he can get to you. But his purpose and his focus is that I need to have a relationship with you. That's the goal. The goal of salvation is relationship. Listen, even if there was no hell, do you think Jesus would still have come and die? Yes. Yes. If there was no hell, Jesus would still would have come and die so that he can have, bring you back to God so that you can have relationship. Our focus so much, we focus so much on the sin. Jesus has already dealt with the sin. The problem is us. The problem is that we are supposed to have that relationship. We are supposed to have that commitment to him. Amen. I want to run over just a few things. Genesis 
Jesus defined eternal life in John 3, John 17, 3. This is eternal life. John 17, 3. I want to just skip over a few things so that... John 17, 3, what does it say? Now this is... Oh, let's read it together. Amen. Amen. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Eternal life means knowing God. And I told you it's a present tense. It is not something when you die, you know, he's going to go and live with the Lord. No, you can have eternal life now. Yeah. The church is missing the point that he's waiting to die to have relationship with God. No, the relationship begins right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Relationship begins right now. And the word, the word there that they may know. You see, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says Adam knew, knew, knew his wife. Do you think the know that he's talking about, he just... Adam just knew Eve intellectually, and they produced babies. No. He was talking about an intimate relationship. At the most intimate, intimate, intimate way. And then Adam and Eve produced. And so that is the word that the Bible is using here. That they may know you, the only one true God. Yes, you have believed in him. But the goal of salvation, the goal for eternal life is for you to know your maker. And that's why sometimes you can accept Christ, yet you don't know him. You can be born again, yet you don't know him. And yet we are living a shallow life. We are not moving and living under the power of God. That's why sometimes the church, they say, oh, the power of God is missing in the church. No. Once you begin to know God and know who he is, you will see that there are things that will begin to happen in your life. You will see a manifestation of the power of God over your life. This morning, does somebody want to know him? Do you want to know him? Do you want to know him? Hallelujah. So I want to, I want us just to have a little bit of time to pray. So I, I'm just uh, jumping over some few things so that we can have some time to pray. The people of old, when they believe in the message of the cross, this word no, they knew God not in their head. To a point that they were willing to lay down their life. You think they were crazy? They knew God. This morning, even as the year is coming to an end. I know Christmas is just around the corner. But God wants to know you in the, the, the most intimate way. God wants to know you so that you can sense him. You can feel God. You know what God is saying about you. You don't need some prophet, as Apostle was saying. You don't need some prophet to tell you what God is saying about you. I've always said that when you are a prayerful person, every prophetic word that is released into your life is a confirmation. Yes. That's right. That's right. I'm telling you the truth. Every prophetic word that is given to you is a confirmation. Because God has already spoken to you. And you already know it. So when the woman or the man of God speaks, you know it just confirms what you already know. But some of us, we are throwing away our money, running away, and it's so sad sometimes because of some of these uh, men of God, what they have done. You, you walk around and even you don't want to say you're a pastor because the image that they have created for pastors, all pastors are not the same. They are genuine ones out there. 
that are preaching the gospel with clean hearts. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we have one here. Yeah. Apostle is one of them. Yeah. <laughs> an end time apostle, an end time vision. Cross Point is an apostolic center with apostolic mandate. And this morning, I know that when you know this Jehovah, when you know this God, you will begin to discover things about yourself that you were not aware before because you know God. Yeah. Don't just read the Bible for reading's sake, but you, uh, allow the word of God to jump into your life. Allow the word of God to come to reality in your life. You read the word of God and you say, Lord, I want, I want to hear you. I want to know you in the most intimate way. Yes. Not every day has become as ritual. You come to church, you go home. And sometimes the same thing. The same old thing. I don't want to be the same old person. I want to know something different. And therefore, I push, I read the Bible, and I hear what God is saying. Don't just listen to other preachers. Because sometimes when you don't know the word for yourself, it will confuse you. People will pollute your mind. People will put some things in your spirit that will harm you, that will destroy your future. But when you know him, this is eternal life. When you know him. And so when, when we talk about heaven, listen, when you know him, you know without doubt that you are going to heaven. It is when, you, when you're like, okay, I'm not sure. Then he, that, when you know, you know. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know without doubt that God is your father. You know without doubt that he that has promised you, he is faithful. And that whatever he has spoken over your life will come to pass. This morning it is my prayer that you have an intimacy with God. Don't just have a shallow end relationship with God. Have an intimacy that you are close to him. Even when things are wrong in your life, you are able to go to your father in your little corner and begin to cry out to him. You will begin to speak your mind to him. Be real. Be real with him. God is not a man that will lie. Like some of us. We we'll say one thing today. Tomorrow we will have different feeling. God is not like that. He doesn't operate on feeling. Whatever he has spoken over your life, whatever he has spoken over your marriage, whatever he has promised that he has given to you, the Bible said he are sure. Yes. Hallelujah. And therefore, this morning, whatever God has spo spoken over you, he is just and faithful. And that hold him by his word. Jephthah said, I've made a vow to God. This morning, make a vow that nothing will come between you and the relationship, the intimate fellowship that you have. It is not even your husband. It's not even your wife. You should have an intimate relationship with your maker by yourself. And when you do that, I'm telling you, you begin to experience your God in another level. You begin to experience God in a way that you've never known before. That they may know you, the only one true God, and Jesus Christ in whom you have sent. This is eternal life. This morning we are coming close. The year is about to end. Many are churches that will have a list of, uh, uh, pray, uh, what do you call it? Not, not prayer requests. Resolution. Thank you. And then before they walk out of the church, they already start breaking them. <laughs> Long list of resolution. Lord, I'll do this, I'll do that, do that. Listen, know him. And that is enough. Yes. Let's be on our feet. This morning, I want us to just... If you're here and you need a, a prayer, I will encourage you, you can come forward. And there are pastors here that will help and they will pray for you. But I want to say that our prayer is that my expectation will not be cut off. 
in 2017. I will experience what I am expecting. I will experience what I'm expecting. Lord, the year is not over. I will experience what I'm expecting. Lord, bless us with uncommon ideas that can be translated into products and services. Those of you who are in businesses, may you go to another level. May God expand your business and your ideas to another level that you will not even be able to comprehend. This morning, I want you to just take a few minutes as we go before him and speak to him, be real with him. As the father who created you and that knows you, he knows your thoughts, he knows your way, he knows what you are struggling with, he knows your, your strength. The Lord, I've come to you just as I am. Just as I am, I've come to you. The Lord, you, O oh God, will mold me. You, O oh God, will shape me according to what you, O oh God, have purpose over my life. Mande Rabasi Katoriande. Jesus, Mahariande Le Boshkata. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we desire, O oh God, a deep, intimate relationship with you. We desire, O oh God, to know you, O oh God, and your dear Son, Jesus, in whom you have sent, that we may know him more and the power of his resurrection. Lord, let it be our prayer, O oh God, this morning. This morning, Lord, we, we have played church for too long, O oh God. Lord, this morning, we want you, O oh God, in another level. Lord, this morning, touch us. This morning, minister to us. This morning, O oh God, open up our eyes of understanding. Oh, this morning, O oh God, fill us, O oh God, with the fullness of your power. Fill us, O oh God, with the fullness of yourself. Oh, this morning, O oh God, we release ourselves to you. This morning, O oh God, break every chain. Let us be loose in your presence. Let us, O oh God, come boldly before the throne of grace. And I know that we have a Father who loves us. Your love never fails. Your love never gives up. Your love, O oh God, is eternal. Your love, O oh God, is permanent. Your love, O oh God, is unconditional. And this morning, O oh God, we bless you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for your faithfulness and your goodness. Maharia Tanderia Shakaturia Babelebe. Wherever you are, if you want us to pray for you, uh, the, uh, the time is open. You can come forward, and uh, there are pastors here that will help uh, uh, pray for you. God bless you.